Rowan, obviously the uh, Ryan Hall news has made the headlines this week. Just, just give us a insight into the rationale around his impending return, if you could, please. Yeah, obviously we've we've been looking for uh, experienced players to to complement the youth that are coming through. So uh, when a you know a veteran English player that's also spent you know a large ch- chunk of his career at Leeds um, became available, um, you know it was. It was a, a good opportunity to have a chat and we aligned with a lot of our thinking and, um, yeah, I'm looking for further, uh, yeah, experience and voice around the group. So that's um, obviously one for next year, but something we're excited by. And, you know, I think Ryan's still playing at a very high level. Um, so the, the age has proven not to be a factor at all. I was going to say it's sort of 50-50, isn't it, in terms of the influence he'll have on the players and the young players already there and the influence that he'll be able to have personally on the pitch. Yeah, I think, um, you know, veteran players that understand their role in developing others um, can have a big impact in a very short period of time. Uh, but, you know, it's it's really about his performance on the field as well is um, is what we're looking for. He's not here just to be a, a mentor or just to finish his career at, at the Rhinos. It's, um, it's to play well and, and help us to play better. And the fact that he's a former legend as well, did, did that play any part? Uh, the fact that he's, you know, he's he's a Leeds Leeds person and a, and a Rhinos player, you know, of the past is is important. Um, and it's it's part of it. But he's he's coming here to to play to play well. You know, that's the priority. And we we've spoken at, at length about that. It's not um, just because he's been here before. It's because he's he's playing well. Um, and he's got plenty plenty still to offer. We won't see the Sunday squad till tomorrow. Um, what have you got the full prognosis on David Fusatua's injury? Yeah, Fus has got a medial uh, knee ligament injury, so he's going to be eight to ten week type uh, type recovery, which is really disappointing for Fus. He's worked so hard through the other knee injury and, and was in really good shape. And, you know, even that first part of the game last week showed what he can do, but we're, we'll help him through this next part and he'll be back to, to finish the season uh, the back end of the year. Is Ash Handley in contention for this week? Ash has been out there running around uh, again today, and he's he's done um, he's done more each day. So we'll uh, we'll see see where he is after today, uh, and whether we whether we name him in the twenty one with the you know the possibility of of uh, giving him a couple more days or not. The cartilage is almost worse than a, a broken rib, isn't it? Is it still giving him some serious discomfort? Yeah, certain things are, are still you know, providing discomfort, you know, which anyone that's ever had a rib injury knows that they can, they can loiter for a period of time. Um, but you just need to let them settle enough to, to be able to be manageable and, and function enough to, to perform. So we'll, you know, he's trending in the right direction. We'll just, we'll, we'll just make a call on that tomorrow, whether he makes the 21 or not. Has Harry Newman recovered from his spasm? Uh, Harry, Harry's got a low, low disc, a uh, low back um, sort of disc bulge, issue so he, he won't he won't be available this week but it's one of those ones that's probably uh, likely to settle reasonably quick and is there any update on the likes of Holroyd and Bentley with the the concussion protocols uh Holroyd's moving through the the protocols um, but he he won't be available this weekend um and Bentley's he, he's sort of got an indefinite return date that's um that's awaiting further consultation in the in the coming weeks. You've sort of resigned to the fact that you probably won't be able to call on James Bentley for quite some time at the moment. Uh, possibly it could be a uh, you know another couple of weeks, or it could be longer than that. We're not you know trying to reserve judgment until we until we know and until um, you know the the consultant gives us the direction on that one. So James is um, you know he's he's in de- decent health he's just not able to to crank up the the training load as, as yet um but he's in he's in good spirits and you know staying positive and, and hoping that we can um turn a corner with it and get back to some full training sometime soon and is there any update on morgan gannon he's he's no no time soon about uh returning and you know a decision on when that return will will come um you know, in the next little while, where the the possible timing to it, but yeah, we're certainly not rushing that one. Um, he's been through a lot, that kid, so we're we're taking the long game there. Obviously, there's a fair few players that you're not able to call on at the moment. There's been quite a bit of player activity around over the last week. Has there been any appetite 
from within your club to to bring players in or or maybe looking to move players out at all? Oh, we're, we're always looking, you know, and particularly once you get into a, a little period where you've got a few missing, uh, looking for possible loan options. But, you know, we're also very committed towards the the development of our youth and the players coming through and, and giving those kids opportunity. So sometimes these situations unveil um, young players and also give other senior players that are in the team to to take even more ownership of of the group. So, yeah, we see the upside in that. So there's nothing nothing imminent there, but we're always open to to making improvements if we can. What about Sunday? Then, what, how do you see the the significance of this fixture in particular? Oh, we we need to get out there and play well. We we're really disappointed with um, the outcome last weekend, and and certain parts of our performance last week just weren't weren't good enough. We weren't able to to scramble uh, enough to do a job having, you know, lots of different edge combinations in that second half. We just didn't do it well enough. Uh, we weren't urgent enough at times. Uh, but in, you know, at half time, you know, I think the the majority of the the fan, the fan base and, you know, us, us ourselves would have would have thought, you know, we were playing well. Um, so we've shown that we can play well and and for good good chunks, but we need to eradicate some of those patches of of poor, um, which, you know, really undid the the good work that we did in the first half last week, the the down periods were were a bit too far down to to be able to get an outcome. And is that one of the concerns at the moment that you you can within the same game lurch lurch from brilliant to poor that you know between those two extremes? Yeah, ideally, you know, from week to week, you want to your best and worst performance not to be too far away. But we know our 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 good patches and our good performances are are very good, which is you know exciting and it, it's um that's really positive for the the players internally that when it's flowing it's it's really good. Um, we are still a, a new group. This is a a new way of doing things um, with a vastly different team, and we're we're eight games in and to build well, going into to our ninth Super League game anyway. That it's important that. You know, you go through some tough times and some adversity. That's how that's how teams are built. Um, so we're disappointed and and not happy with uh, the way that we've missed some opportunities to get some more results. Uh, but we're also at the same time positive about the periods where we have been good. Uh, it takes time to to gel as a team, and you really only ever gel as a team once you've been through some some tough periods and some tough times. If you if you only ever go um, you know, smooth sailing, as they say, doesn't make uh, for great sailors. So we're uh, we're fighting through those things and taking some lessons. And and every every week is an opportunity to learn. And um, we've we've taken some harsh learns out of last week. And you know, we played against the team. It's probably not stated enough that that played very well. They they put on some great plays and they've been scoring a lot of tries against lots of different opposition um, in recent times. So. It's not as simple as just doing what you want to do all the time. You you got to be able to combat the opposition and and their strengths. And um, they were they were on for a good period of that time that game last week. Just lastly, for me, Rowan, um, what's your take on Hull in terms of maybe how unpredictable they are at the moment? And have you reached out to Uncle Tony for any inside info this week? Oh, obviously, I I, I don't pay too much attention to the to the press, but um. You know, I'm aware there's there've been some player movements um, this week, and we'll see what the makeup of their 21 is, and and really that's all that matters to us. And working out what their likely combinations are, and you know they're they're under a new regime um, with with Grixie taking over there, and Richie coming in to to have some input. That you know they they may have used this long turnaround to to implement some change about how they're going to play. So we're not exactly sure what they're they're going to throw at us, other than you know, obviously the evidence that they've shown on video. So they've got some good players. They're going to be desperate to to get a good performance under the the new regime and back at home. But, you know, playing at Hull is somewhere we're excited to to go. It's a, it's a great stadium and a great surface. And, you know, we look forward to getting out there and, and giving our best uh, best account. And there'll be some bragging rights in the Griggs family as well, won't they? I've just realised. Yeah, I don't know if the Griggsies will be chatting too much to each other this week, but, um, you know, post-game, I'm sure they'll... Share a beer or share a chat, and, and um, yeah, it's a pretty proud brother moment to be competing against each other at, at that level. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully uh, Scott will be the one that's uh, smiling on Sunday.
I suppose the obvious question with, with Ryan Hall coming in is um, where does that leave Dave Fussy Tua? He's in the last year of his contract. Does, does that mean he's um, not going to be at the club next year? No, we, we've discussed with, with Fussy and his management. It was always about uh, Fuss getting back to some form and some consistent footy and then we'll assess things as we go there. So, um, yeah, Fuss, Fuss has played other positions in, in his upbringing and, and whatnot. Um so we'll, we'll wait and see. But, you know, for now, it's about Fuss recovering and getting back to playing some footy before there'll be, you know, any uh, any discussions there from our half. Yeah, you, mu you, must, um, you must feel for him. He's had absolutely no luck whatsoever, has he? In terms of injuries, anyway. Yeah, I do. Fuss is a, a, great, a great man and a, a great player, as we've seen um, when he's out there. He's... Uh, He's a real threat and a real attribute to us, but it's yeah, it's disappointing for for Force and for for the club that he hasn't been out there as often as we'd all like. But um, you yeah, know, we're certainly supporting him and getting behind him at, at this difficult time. He, he's worked so hard to get back to to playing last week to to suffer another injury straight away. Is um, you know, is really heartbreaking and you know, a difficult thing for 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 a player to take because you know what they want to do is be out there playing. Um, people don't always understand that. Yeah, you know, they do still get paid, and they still um, they still have a job. But it's like it's it's part of it. Part of them is being taken away from them. You know, all the hard work that they do to to put themselves out there. So we, yeah, we're really feeling for Fuss and, and doing our best to support him. Yeah, yeah. Is there any update on um, James Donaldson? Yeah, I know he was being assessed over his um, neck injury. You got to the bottom of that yet? Yeah, Dono's had um, he's had. Yeah sort of minor neck issues in the past um, and it's sort of just flared up recently. So he's had uh, a, an appointment with the consultant a couple of days ago and there's been some uh, some intervention there. So we'll know a little bit more where he's at probably in a week or so's time and see how, how things are settling. And then there'll be a, uh, based on that sort of settlement period, we'll be able to work on, um, you know, an estimated return to, to play sort of period. But I'd imagine it's still a few weeks to a month away. And just finally, for me, you you mentioned um, young players. It could open the door. Having players out could open the door for some youngsters. You've got a couple that have played on um, Joe Reg at Halifax, um, Riley Lum, and, and Jack Smith. Um, obviously, we've seen Ned McCormack the other week. Could could we see some more potential debutants? Do you think over the next uh, the next few weeks, teenagers coming in? Yeah, there they could well be. Um, some of those injuries that we, we've discussed earlier are uh, relatively short term. So um, depending on if they're back will depend on, you know, you know if those opportunities come for, for a debut or for a, for a second or a third game or or whatever that is for those young guys. But yeah, we, we're excited by the youth that are coming through. So the only way to get experience is by getting experience. So uh, could be some great opportunities for them. Short dropouts are a bit of a hot topic at the moment. A lot of people see them as a high risk, low reward tactic. What's the thinking behind it from your point of view? I think it's very circumstantial, um, is what they should be used for. Um, clearly, on the weekend, you know, we've discussed we didn't think that was the time for it. Uh, ironically, there's been other people sort of that watched the game that thought it may have been, a, you know, some rugby league experts have, have mentioned to me, they thought it might've been a good time to do it because we were struggling to, to have any real possession. So it's really, um, you know, a club by club or a case by case situation, those, those short dropouts. But in that situation, I'm, I'm not encouraging or endorsing um, the short dropout. That was um, something that we'll certainly learn from. As you see, you know, in the NRL that the, with the, the rule change, that they've made where you you can't kick a penalty goal on a failed dropout that nearly everyone's going for a drop, you know, a short dropout. You know, I think it's 80, 80 odd, maybe a bit more percent of the time people are going short. So there's obviously some, uh, some better reward than a 50, 50 situation. If, if um, so many teams are doing it, but in that circumstance, we would, we would encourage going long. Is it a tactic you'll persist with then? Is it something you use when you're chasing a game rather than, in the balance like that? Yeah, generally it's been um, talked about internally about using it when we've got great catches in position, good conditions as in, you know, the wind might be blowing slightly in your face. Um, sometimes the energy battle of the game, but generally it's when you're, uh, and, and generally this year we've only gone for short dropouts and kickoffs 
when the game has been ahead of us, where we've needed the ball to be able to score. Like nothing infuriates me more watching games when teams are down by a try or two sometimes and they kick it long when the time's running out and you're, you're limiting your opportunities to have the ball. Like I, I don't see how that makes sense. Um, but we have chosen a couple of times where we, we shouldn't have. Um, but we'll we'll learn from that and we'll be able to also able to utilize that that short dropout and short kickoff when we do need it because we've we've actually practiced it as well.